Professor Clements with you as we consider refraction through a triangular shaped piece of glass. So I'll let you look at the uh, sketch here and we'll see if that makes sense compared to the wording of the problem. So we have some, again, middle of the road uh, light here in the visible spectrum passing into normal glass. The glass is in the shape of an equilateral triangle. So there are 180 degrees in a triangle. Equilateral means all three sides are equal, which means all three angles will be equal. So 60, 60, 60, those three add up to 180. Uh, we have an angle of array in air 50 degrees away from the normal. And again, normals are drawn perpendicular to the surface. Now if I label this here, here's our normal perpendicular to this boundary between the glass and the air. The angle is zero degrees at the normal and increases going away from the normal. Here's our ray of light entering this uh, triangular shaped piece of glass. So we're going to do the calculations and also uh, draw the rays through the uh, materials here. Now we need to start off again with index of refraction. We're going to be using Snell's law. Um, N1 sine theta 1, that'll be the air in the calculation I'm doing right now. And N2 sine theta 2, that'll be in the glass. We're going to say air has an index of refraction of 1, and the glass has an index of refraction of 1.52. And you know, if you had a different type of glass, some special glass, that might be a different number. If it's diamond, it's a much different number. But let's use these values. So our glass triangle. So doing the calculation, 1 times sine. Well, what number should I put in here? Hmm. Well, we look at the word problem, we look at our diagram. 50 degrees is the angle. Theta is the angle from the normal to the ray. So 50 degrees, and I have 1.52 and sine of theta 2. We're trying to calculate theta 2. What's the angle inside the glass? You should pause, use your calculator, and uh, see if you agree with me at the end here. But 1 sine of 50 degrees divided by 1.52.50398 is equal to the sine of theta. And I'm going to go ahead and label glass, the angle inside the glass. I have to take inverse sine of both sides. So I'll just kind of schematically represent that here. I have to take inverse sine of both sides. I'll get some value and I take inverse sine of here. This is not mathematically correct, but just to give you what's going on, I'm going to take inverse sine of this number. I'm going to take inverse sine of sine theta glass. Inverse sine and sine will cancel. I'll just have theta glass. And I came up with 30.26 degrees for theta glass. So I'm going to draw that on here as best I can. 30.2 degrees. Again, the uh, normal is at zero degrees. So 10, 20, 30, just a little bit beyond. Go to that dot. And now I'll take my ray going across here all the way to the other side. And now at this other side, I'm going to put on a normal. Here would be our normal. Second normal, perhaps, on this side. And I'm going to extend it out here a ways also. So there's our second normal. So our calculated angle here was 30.26 degrees. Uh, not intending these lines to touch. Uh, I'm not creating a triangle here. But we need to know this angle. So I can repeat Snell's law with the angle here as uh, a known value and the angle in the air being the unknown. So to order to get this angle, I'm going to work my way around the, uh, the triangle here. Let's call this angle phi. 
and I'll call it phi 1. How can I find the value for phi 1? Well, the normal over here is 90 degrees away from our surface. So phi 1, the full angle to the normal from the surface is 90 degrees, and we use up 30.26 with that ray. So phi 1, if I'm doing the calculation right here, 59.74 degrees. I need phi 2 before I can get this theta over here. Um, so how do I get that? Well, now we're in a triangle. Triangles have 180 degrees. So this phi 2 would be 180 degrees inside the triangle minus 59.74, that's phi 1, minus 60 degrees, that's at the top of the triangle. So I find that phi 2 has a value of 60.26 degrees. And makes sense. You know, this angle is less than 60, this one's 60. I need more than 60 for phi 2. Now I can calculate um, this theta 2, this theta for where we're in the glass on the exit side. And that theta would be 90 minus 60.26 degrees. And that theta is 29.74 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and label that in here. 29.74 degrees. The phi 1 was 59.74. The phi 2 was uh, 60.26. And 90 again here between the normal and this side of the glass is 90 degrees. So 90 minus 60.26 leaves us 29.74. And now we use Snell's Law again. I'm inside the glass to start with, so index refraction 1.52. Sine of the angle of the ray away from the normal inside the glass, 29.74. Index refraction of air is 1. And I need the angle out in air. So you're going to take your calculator, 1.52 times the sine of 29.74 degrees. Divide by 1, take inverse sine of both sides, and I came up with the angle in, uh, well, maybe first temporarily. When I did this calculation, I got 0 0.7540. And I need to slide my paper up just a little bit here. 0 0.7540 for this left side, and taking inverse sine of that, I have 48.9 degrees for the angle in the air, okay. 48.9 degrees. And again, I'll attempt to draw that here. I put my protractor here, level with this edge of the uh, triangle. Zero is at the normal, 10, 20, 30, 40. This would be 50. So maybe a dot right about here. And I'm not going to go through my work, but uh, Something like that. And again, the angle over here is where we've uh, calculated. And that angle is 48.9 degrees. And that's the path light will take through a prism. It uh, is not quite a curve, but uh, going through like that. And actually, I did part B while I was uh, on a roll here. Part B, calculate the angle of the ray as, it, ray as it exits the glass and moves through the air on the outside of the other side of the prism. So, sorry, I kind of squeezed in all the calculations here, but uh, this is the result. Out in the air, 48.9 degrees. So, read the directions. Just do the part of the problem that you're supposed to do. Part A, calculate the angle of the ray in the glass. So, we work that out, 30.26. And then all of this relates to part B. I had to use geometry and work my way around to find this theta 2, the theta in the glass, for the ray as it's about to exit the glass. The ray is cutting across like this. These other lines are normals. And find 48.9 degrees for the ray going out into the air. So ask your instructor if you have questions on that. Keep practicing.